In this video, you'll first learn when, why, and how to run OneWay or Nova using SPSS. Second, you'll learn to focus on what it is exactly that you need to interpret, rather than wasting your time on trying to interpret all the numbers that really do not add any value to your presentation. Third, you'll learn how to interpret the output accurately. And finally, you'll learn to narrate and present the results in your paper both coherently and concisely so that your audience, teachers, or classmates don't fall asleep during your presentation. Now, let's get right to it. Now, first things first, before we run the procedure in SPSS, let's quickly review the requirements of ANOVA by asking ourselves when and why we may need to run ANOVA. ANOVA is used when we have one independent variable with three or more categories and one dependent variable whose attributes are continuous. So that's when. We use ANOVA procedure because we're interested in seeing whether there are differences in the outcome, the dependent variable, and if there are, between which pair of categories are the differences statistically significant. So that's why. So what you need is one independent variable with three or more categories and one dependent variable that is continuous. The example I have for you is this. Does the level of burnout that people experience at work differ depending on their education. And the education variable has four categories, high school diploma, AA degree, bachelor's degree, and graduate degree. Now let's run the procedure in SPSS. Here I am in SPSS that contains uh, those two variables, uh, one that measures highest education and the second variable that measures people's burnout in the workplace. Now let's go to analyze and go to compare means and go down and choose one way ANOVA. Here, we're gonna move the highest level of education, which is our independent variable, to where it says factor. And we'll move the dependent variable, burnout, to where it says dependent list. And we'll choose, I will click on the postdoc button. Now we're in this window uh, because we have a pretty good reason to believe and expect that differences will be significant between some categories of education in this example. Uh, as you can see, there are many multiple uh, um, uh, pairwise multiple comparisons tests that are available in SPSS. Now, these tests examine the difference between each pair of means uh, in, the, in the dependent variable and yield a matrix where the differences are significantly different at an alpha level of 0 0.05. Now, one of the most commonly used multiple comparisons tests is called Tukey which uses the studentized range statistic to make all of the pairwise comparisons between groups. Um, but you don't really need to know that. All we need to remember at this point is that if equal variances in the dependent variable are assumed between the education categories, as, uh, as the, that's the example we're having, uh, just know that uh, you use the two key for your example. And if you have a reason to believe that equal variances among the categories of education should not be assumed, then you have about four options here. And for the time being, we'll choose Tam Haynes T2. No, it has nothing to do with the Terminator. It's just a famous mathematician's last name. And this is perhaps the most conservative pairwise comparisons test that is based on a t-test. So uh, probably one of the reasons why I would like to choose Temmings T2 um, against the, all the others and click continue. Now click on the options button. Now select all the boxes here, including the means plot. And I will interpret each item when we generate the output, click continue and click okay to run the procedure. Now, when you run it, you'll have about seven or eight tables, but I included, I think six, about seven most important tables that you would actually need to interpret or describe that can be helpful for your presentation. Now, let's examine one table at a time. First, the descriptives table. In the descriptives table, you just wanna make sure that the information looks correct and that there is no outrageous numbers skewing the information and so on. Right now, we see that the sample size varies quite a bit from those with a bachelor's degree compared to those in other education groups, which is sort of expected as this is a sample of government employees. And the workplace burnout appears to increase as education credentials increase. But our ultimate agenda when running ANOVA is to see whether the differences between groups are significant, and if they are, where are the differences significant? So that's the question. So to examine that further, let's move to the next table. 
The homogeneity of variances table is important and it gives us the Levine's statistic, which examines whether the variances in the scores of a dependent variable are the same for each of the four education groups. The Levine's test is essentially a test of the null hypothesis that the variances in burnout scores are the same for all education groups. And if the p-value, the probability value, is less than 0 0.05, then that means that there are significant differences in variability between the four education groups. So we will reject the null hypothesis. But the p-value here is 0.845, which is clearly greater than 0 0.05 threshold. So we cannot reject the null which means the group variances are equal in the population from which the sample was derived. So, so far so good. Now let's proceed examining the rest of the output. Let's look at the third table. Perhaps the most important table in ANOVA is this one, because this table essentially determines whether the differences in burnout are or are not statistically significant. The key to testing the null hypothesis here is to see how likely it is to obtain the sum of squares between groups, whether that's as large or, as, uh, uh, or larger than the one observed here, assuming the null hypothesis is true. And we need to look at the p-value, which is 0 0.02, and this is lower than 0 0.05 threshold, which is where we draw the line in terms of whether the differences are significant or not. Now, if the null hypothesis were true, then the probability of getting an F ratio as large as the one obtained in this sample, which is 3.277 or larger, is less than 2%, which is below the 5% threshold. So we must reject the null, and we conclude that there are significant differences somewhere in the education group, and we just don't know where the differences are significant just yet. So let's look at the next table. Normally, I would interpret this table last, but when you run ANOVA in SPSS, this table shows up right after the ANOVA table that shows whether the differences in the outcome scores are statistically significant. Now, this ANOVA effect sizes table, this table tells us how much of the difference in workplace burnout is due to the education differences. And if your audience is full of practitioners, for example, who care more about how much impact education really has on the workplace burnout, then this is the one table that they will pay particular attention to. Why? Because you can speak and interpret your results in terms of the percentage term. For example, the most frequently used formula for calculating effect size is ETA squared. And you get ETA squared by dividing the sum of squares between groups by total sum of squares from the ANOVA table earlier. So if you divide 16.917 by 786.045, then you get the ETA squared, which is 0 0.022. Now, to convert this into percentage term, just multiply by 100, then you get, yes, 2%. So you can say about 2% of the variance in workplace burnout can be explained by education. In the literature, however, 2% is considered to be a small effect size. Now, from a practical standpoint, the effect size, as, as I just mentioned, is rather small. But from a statistical standpoint, since it is statist statistically significant, you would be curious to see where the differences are found to be statistically significant. So let's look at the uh, uh, multiple comparisons table. Here, we see that there are no differences in burnout between those with high school diploma and those with AA degree, as the p-value is greater than 0.05. But the differences are statistically significant when comparing those with high school diploma to those with bachelor's degree and those with, uh, with a graduate degree, as the p-value is below 0 0.05. Now, the means plot can show it visually. The burnout scores are quite similar and relatively high among those with um, AA degree, bachelor's degree, and graduate degree, but burnout is lower for those with high school diploma. And to present the results from the one-way between groups ANOVA with post hoc tests, you can narrate your report this way. That ANOVA was conducted to explore differences in burnout among the four education groups. Participants were divided into four groups according to their education credentials. That there was a statistically significant difference at the P.05 uh, level in burnout scores for the four education groups. 
and say although statistical significance was achieved, from a practical standpoint, the actual difference in mean burnout scores between, between the groups was quite small, which was calculated using ETA squared for the effect size and was 0 0.02. And post hoc comparisons using the two key HSD tests indicated that the mean score for those with high school diploma was significantly different from those with a bachelor's degree and those with degrees beyond bachelor's degrees. Burnout scores, however, did not differ significantly between those with AA and bachelor's degree and beyond. I hope this tutorial was helpful. I'll see you next time.